Good day and welcome to Region Talk on UE TV. I am your host, Cleveland Sam. Today on Region Talk, we look at school-based assessment, or SBA as they are commonly called, and their management. My guest, Donna Giles, Assistant Registrar at the Caribbean Examinations Council, and she works in the Examinations Development and Production Division. Donna, welcome. Thank you. And to my immediate right is Mr. Lionel Seeley, and he is a teacher of two subjects, Cape Law and CSEC Geography at the St. Michael's School here in Barbados. Welcome, Lionel. Thank you very much. Before I ask you how you get all of that done, Donna, school-based assessment has been part of the CXC's assessment scheme from day one in 1979 when CXC introduced the CSEC examinations. What is the whole philosophical underpinning of SBAs? Okay, Cleveland. At CXC, we see SBAs as assessments done by and at the school. And what I mean by that is, even though I say by and at the school, um, the school is not just doing it on its own. Um, CXC sets criteria and guidelines, mm -hmm. and you will find these criteria and guidelines outlined in the syllabus. Um, also, you'll find some samples mm -hmm. of SBAs, you'll find some samples of how to mark. So CSC gives you, gives the teacher all the resources that they need. Mm -hmm. um, this is located in the syllabus. So what the teacher does is the teacher comes up with these assessments mm -hmm. using those guidelines. Mm -hmm. These assessments are given to the students, they're done at the school mm -hmm. um, by the students yeah. with the teacher's guidance and the teacher marks these assignments. These marks then come to us at CSC, mm -hmm. and we use these marks to go towards the student's final grade. And what SBA does is re it reduces the reliance on a, what we call a one-shot exam. Right. So students are not just relying on mm -hmm. that particular one day when they're doing their paper one or two. Right. You know, they, they have these assessments that occur over a period of time. So it, re it reduces that reliance. The other thing that we, that we um, bear in mind is that the students are, not, are now in a pressure-free environment. And what I mean by pressure-free environment is non-examination conditions. I mean, you know how students feel when, on that one day when they walk into the exam room, they're all nervous. When you're doing the SBAs, there's no reason to be nervous. You're in your own environment. Right. You know, your, your teacher's there. So it's a non-pressure environment. So, um, and that, that's, that was our thinking when we okay. thought of SBA. The other um, important factor here is that <clears throat> students get a sense of satisfaction that when we actually walk, walk into the paper one or paper two, we're, we're not going in there with zero MC marks. We, we yeah. are walking in with some marks. Yeah. You know, we have the FSCCSLC, we can take in at least 50% of our marks. Right. I mean, should we excel? Yeah. Uh, at our SBAs okay. and very important is that it allows the teacher to become very involved in the assessment mm. process. We always say okay we control the paper one and paper two but the teachers and the students they control the SBAs and okay. so it allows the teachers to be integrally involved in the so SBAs. Lionel you're the teacher. First of all I, I was amazed when I heard that you teach Two, not just two subjects, but two subjects in different cognate groups. So you teach, tell us, tell, tell, tell us what you do at St. Michael's School. Well, I am responsible for making sure that students cover a section of the syllabus in the law program for Cape. And this is at Cape, yes. And this is at Cape level. Mm -hmm. But the advantage we have is that we have more than one teacher. Right. So what you can decide to do at the beginning of any school year mm -hmm. is to decide how are you going to divide the syllabus Right. to accommodate the fact that you need to be able to cover your SBA material. Right. So that's going to happen at the CAPE level for sure in a number of subjects. Right. And then at the CSEC level, you're going to be able to follow the student from as early as... Oh, sorry, but you form. teach what at the CSEC level? This is geography. Right. Right. <laughs> so you're able to follow the student from as far as um, third form. Right. And then you will have an, a good idea as mm. to how you're going to structure your SBA component. Right depending on what uh, area that you want to plan to study, whether it be coastal um, studies or whether it be mm. manufacturing or whatever right. the case may be. So you're able to switch easily if you're well organized right. and you work with your colleagues to make sure that the success and the aims okay. for the objectives that you want per subject 
RBMA. Right. So Donna mentioned in, in answering my first question that part of the philosophy of SBA is to empower the teacher to feel as if you are contributing to the student's final grade. As a teacher, do you get that sense? Yes, I agree with that 100%. The concept of the one-shot examination mm. can be scary. Right. It provides the examination body with the ability to have a taste of what the student is able to do should there be any emergencies. Right, that's a very good point, actually. All right? And um, what you have coming out is the ability to be able to practice your subject area over a period of time in a chronological process. Mm. So you're able to discuss the court system. Someone might be interested in the area of uh, the ombudsman, for example, right. the function of the ombudsman within mm. the court system and decide to do a project on that. Mm. And at the same time, the SBA is directly part of the actual right. syllabus. So you're revising and studying mm. at the same time as you're preparing for the final exam. So you're accomplishing two goals at the same time. That's right. So as a teacher, and uh, I know, again, straddling two subjects, what do you see as the benefit of the continuous assessment, both for you and the student? I believe from experience right. that the cumulative process mm -hmm. is fortified. Okay. What is happening here is Could you that explain that for the non-academic and non-teacher <laughs> among us? <laughs> Over a period of time, right. uh, we before used to see school as a number of tests right. preparing you to be able to write one final examination, as sure. Donna would have said before. Yes. The SBA provides the ability for the individual to develop confidence over time. Right. So I go into the field and I know that I'm doing a series of labs. Mm -hmm. And I know that I would have completed 15 labs or 20 labs if mm -hmm. it's a science subject you're talking about. Right. However, in the case of geography, for example, there's nothing better than a field trip. I'm being sure. There I remember some of those. And taking photographs and being able mm -hmm. to see that the textbook is correct. Right. To be able to see that your radical research process mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is on point. There's a change in mm -hmm. environment. So if there's something new, the yeah. student is able to see it right. and the student is able to research it mm. to be able to write a better final examination. So we've seen changes and development mm. and metamorphosis taking place over time right. by being able to have the SBA as part of the process of um, development for the student, both at the CSET level mm. and at the CAPE level. Right. All right so I'm so, going to jump in here where you talk about the changes and the ma metamorphosis. Right. So I'm going to go way down to the to the role of the teacher and that feedback because that's right. what allows the yeah, exactly. students to metamorphosize. Yeah. Um, the, the role of the teacher is very, very important when it comes to feedback. Right. Um, and, and critical to Sorry, SBA. and I think that's what you meant when you talk about the cumulative the, process. Indeed, yes. Indeed, yes, indeed. Yes. And um, so the the, the feedback given to the, to the students, um, it allows them to develop over time. And, and what we envision um, SBA as, it's not a, a, a one-shot thing in terms of, I present my SBA to you, teacher, and you give me a mark, and that's the final mark. Yeah. What we at CSC would want is that when, I, when the student presents the SBA, that you give them some feedback. I don't just want to see three mm. out of 10 or seven out of 10 right. or very good, excellent, or you know, poor effort. I would like that the, or we at CSC would like mm -hmm. that the teacher would give the, the student a, a more, a more in-depth yeah. feedback. So if my results don't match my discussion, if I'm discussing generally, mm. but the teacher knows that, well, I'm supposed to discuss those results. Um, teacher says to student, you know, yeah, why well, you have a fancy discussion? It's just mm. general, but really and truly, right. you should discuss um, the results that you got in your, in your experiment. And that's the process. And, yeah. and indeed, that is the process. What we do is that we outline what the requirements are going to be at the beginning of the school year. And then we structure the weeks to be able to know where we should be, dividing the SBA, depending on the subject, in parts, in my case law, at the CAPE level and CSET geography, mm -hmm. so that when I give you feedback on a section of the SBA, you know what areas of that section you need to improve mm -hmm. while working on the second section. All right. So there is a continuous back and forth situation taking place between the teacher and the student. 
And that and that's what we that's what we want. That's, that's what we want to see. We want to see that continuous feedback. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we, we know that we don't have a infinite amount of time in the term, right. and we know there are lots of other activities. But um, you know, we still want to see that that first mark is not the student's the final, final mark. mark. Right. Yeah, and Precisely. that is um, and back I made a discussion. good point, which I, I want to take upon. Uh, where he mentioned third form. I know the CSEC syllabus is a two-year syllabus, but you said you guys actually start in third form. What I meant to say indeed is that you come across students and you're able to see their abilities okay. in the junior school. Right. So what happens is that when that decision is made that these will be my subjects that I'll be taking forward, mm. you have an idea okay. as to the performance, quality, mm. the ability of the student. So you can work with them so therefore, That's right. And you can structure your style of teaching mm -hmm. to accommodate the different student that you're going to have in the class. Right. I also want to take you up on another point, but this question I'm going to ask to, to Donna, because I think it's a critical one. When you mentioned the fact that in case of emergencies, these SBA masks can be used. Donna, that's something that CXC does. Yeah, and, and sometimes um, students are ill, sometimes students, um, they have accidents on the morning of the, the exam. Right. And, you know, we get these requests, um, you know, mm. please look at these students, um, mm. please give them some consideration. Mm. And so we can look at the we look at the SBAs, we mm -hmm. look at the papers that they they write, mm -hmm. and we we take we look at the medical certificates. We take everything in con into mm -hmm. consideration. We look also at the the teacher would have given that student a projected grade, right. and that projected the grade would have been yeah yes. that rank right, right. based on you know the student's mm -hmm. performance throughout the term, including the SBAs. So mm -hmm. we look at all of that. We take all that into consideration, and we can award the the student an assessed grade. Um, so, if and, and if they're, sorry, go ahead. And if I may interject here, there is a psychological confidence associated with having a mark before you enter an exam. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, yes definitely. <laughs> there is yes. a psychological Very confidence. Good point. So what yes. happens here is that I'm entering the examination right. with a certain feeling yes. that I need to maintain this good quality mark right. that yeah. I may be entering the examination with. And many students do try to find out, and they know mm -hmm. what the percentage of the SBA component they would have before right. entering before the examination. Mm. Yes, very good point. So, uh, going back to the whole point of using the SBAs in case of emergencies. So, if a student does not have that SBA mark, what happens? If you if a student does not have that SBA mark, mark they can't get a grade. SBA okay. is critical. Okay. You must, SBA is very, very critical mm. to your final grade, right. right? If they do not have that SBA mark, we can't give them a grade. Right. Whereas if, if they miss one of the other papers, right. Right, and they had the SBA mark, they did one paper, we can, mm. but the SBA is very, very, very critical. Okay. It shows us how that student developed mm. throughout the two years. Mm. So we, we can um, take a physics student and, and send them out there with a grade two and right. they haven't done any Our SBAs, labs. they haven't done any labs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's very, very critical. You are looking at Region Talk and we are discussing school-based assessment. We'll be back in a minute. The sun rises on the blessed lands of our ancestors. Sun-kissed children of the Caribbean awaken, strengthened by a brutal past. With your abiding faith, go, take your place at the center of the world. You, we, me. This is UE TV. Move your career forward and gain the expertise you need with a postgraduate degree from Mona School of Business and Management, the premier business school in the Caribbean. Visit us online to learn more about our suite of cutting edge programs and to submit your application. MSBM Forward Thinking. Four campuses, one university. Caribbean Matters. You, we, this is UE TV. I have 
a reference point through this program that I can apply emotional intelligence to make some decision. The number of areas that you cover in that short period of time and the way it's facilitated allows you to be much more knowledgeable. And I was able to apply them to my real life, not only at home, but also in the workplace. My finance manager saw the other day and said to me, and she said the public like that was ever since I started this program, you can see the difference in terms of your input at this level. I later became elected, or selected I should say, to become part of a team who would have gone to Ghana in Africa, one of our banks up there, to go and work there. And that is because of, not solely, but partly because of the EMBA program. Okay. Really, really helped. I mean, I can't put a limit to the benefit of this program, honestly. Welcome back to Region Talk, and we are talking school-based assessment or SBAs. And my guests, I'm calling them by first name now, Donna, who is with the Caribbean Examinations Council, and Lionel, who is a teacher at the St. Michael's School here in Barbados. And now, Donna, at CXE, we have a suite of qualifications, and all of them carry school-based assessment. Can you run us through the whole SBA superstructure, if you may call it that? Sure, okay. So let's, let's, let's take it from the top and go down. So we have our CAPE, um, the, the highest level, we have our CAPE subjects, and I'm going to take them in the different cognate areas. Right. So you have the CAPE sciences, and within the CAPE sciences, the SBAs consist of a series of labs, mm. and, the, and their, the students are assessed on skills such as um, analysis and interpretation, um, planning and designing, mm. drawing, you know, um, specific scientific skills. That's the sciences. We have the humanities and the languages. They are, they are given, sorry, the humanities and the business areas, sorry. The humanities and the business areas, they have projects or portfolios mm. and they are assessed, and I think Lionel alluded to this earlier, they are assessed mainly on their research skills. Right. So the ability to collect data, mm -hmm. their ability to evaluate, um, synthesize and, and, you know, um, put together discussions. Mm -hmm. So they are assessed based on typical research skills right. and that's the humanities and the, bus and the business area. The languages, um, they have their orals, okay. their orals form their SBAs. Mm -hmm. And that's the CAPE level. The CSET level mm -hmm. is kind of similar. You have your sciences, again, labs. a series of labs, mm -hmm. um, testing certain scientific skills. Mm -hmm. um, those um, science teachers listening would know their observation, yeah. reporting, recording, analysis, and inter interpretation, mm -hmm. etc. The business and the humanities, again, they go for their portfolios and their projects. Mm -hmm. um, with, um, measuring specific research skills right. and the languages again go for the mm -hmm. um, the orals. When you get to the CCSLC level, we have our sciences again and again. Right. The sciences mm -hmm. are standards, labs. your labs and your right. scientific skills, and then you have some languages and you have some humanities subjects within right. that suite, and they go for project work, mm -hmm. but they test um, certain skills like reading skills, writing skills, listening skills okay. at that level, at CCS, CCSLC level. Mm -hmm. And then we have our lowest level, the CPEA level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where our students are in the primary, primary schools, schools and they're now being exposed to what we call the SBAs. Right. And so they have portfolios as well. They have book reports. Report. They have self-assessments yes. and, you know, um, Very exciting stuff yeah, goes yeah, on, on yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how our SBAs mm -hmm. are structured across the different levels mm -hmm. and across the different cognate groups. Well, you yeah. start at the CSEC level line now. That's right. And I want to make a specific point here in that in the real world, there is project work. Yes. <laughs> the architect must be able to draw diagrams to be able to present to a possible developer. Clients, yeah. And um, what is happening here is that you're exposing, as far as I see it, the student to the ability to be able to be applicable to the workforce. Exactly. So the SBA complements the real world. Mm -hmm. I know of no profession where you would have uh, the theoretical aspect and then not the practical aspect mm -hmm. being applied to the world of work. Mm -hmm. So I see the student um, practicing, as you said, the suite of SBAs mm -hmm. across the board from CXC as being able to be exposed to 
a fitting process that will be familiar to them mm -hmm. at a higher level. Okay, so take us through, for example, in geography. Um, I mean, geographers are involved in a number of careers. You mentioned some of the things earlier in terms of SBAs. But I mean, climate change is a big deal now Definitely. all around the world. Um, hurricanes and floods and so on. What typically are some of the SBAs you would see some of your students presenting? Well, depending on the area that they have chosen to mm -hmm. investigate, mm -hmm. uh, you want to see, for example, the rate at which your course might be mm -hmm. exposed to erosion. Right. Uh, you might want to be able to compare the statistics associated with rainfall mm -hmm. over a 30-year period. Right. Uh, you might want to be able to look at it in a more microscopic way when you look at the daily mm -hmm. weather. Okay. And then there's also the area of manufacturing, the contribution of manufacturing to the development of, mm -hmm. let us not forget the the human yeah, aspect of geography, of the, geography. the development of the, the society. In my time, they used to call that regional. That's right. Okay, see, I see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> regional, that's right. Regional and physical. Yes, yeah. so the student is able to, you know, have an exposure right. to the real world. Mm -hmm. However, because, in, because we have to watch time constraints, of course, <laughs> uh, you look at the fact that a group can do two topics, mm -hmm and decide that we are going to be able to have a section of the class concentrating on one area, mm -hmm. another section of the class concentrating on another area, right. or you can have the entire class doing an urban study, mm -hmm. and indeed you will find that the individual students will be seeing something else. Mm -hmm. There will be variation taking place. Interesting. Um, Lionel has brought me to further down the road. I intended to do this later, but he, has, he said a group. Right can work on yes. one area, and then he's gone to an entire <laughs> class. And I know one of the complaints that we get is, you know, the amount of work that, um, you know, that SBAs um, right. produce. And, and we, are, we are always conscious and we're okay. always listening. And one of the things that we, that we allow is we allow for that group work. Group so we're work. not saying that every student must have done that geography project that Lionel yeah. is talking about. He has two classes. But, right. So that... <laughs> project right. could have been a group project or as Lionel alluded to, it could have been a class project. Right. And that's one of the initiatives that we um, at CSC, um, that we would want to see um, continue right. in order to reduce that workload. And to help with the management of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and in the case of law, right. you have a situation where there's so many areas of the law where a student can be curious as to why is this happening this way. And that's where you have someone investigating the functions of a QC, right. the individuals that are responsible for managing a court. Mm -hmm. So you can easily have 20 people in the classroom and each person is enthusiastic about a section of mm. the law syllabus that they different want topics. to investigate. Mm. I am saying there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Okay. But you also... But I also you, uh, welcome group work because okay. in mm -hmm. the interest of time and there are some interruptions in any school year mm -hmm. that will yeah. interfere with the way that you really want to do the right. things you know, you had planned, mm -hmm. there is room for group work, and mm -hmm. I'm happy that CSE has gone that Yeah, we, we, embrace, we definitely embrace um, group work. Okay. Yeah. So we spoke about geography. Now, law, um, from the outside, it looks to us in terms of study as a very theoretical topic. What are some of the interesting um, areas you have seen students to their SBAs in law? Yes, uh, there's an area of the law <coughs> which we refer to as the ethical issues within the mm. law, where you can have a dramatization taking place in class, okay. where the teacher can pretend to be the attorney, students can pretend to be the lawyers in practice, right. well, attorneys also, right. and then you have uh, the courtroom setting being able to be um, you know, reconstructed. Oh, nice. Okay. All right? Mm. You can also have a situation where if there's supposed to be an ethical and professional relationship between the lawyer and the client, I am not supposed to stay behind my door and whisper to the secretary, tell her I am not here. <laughs> These are the issues right. coming out. So the, the course is not a theoretical course with, mm. that is dry mm. and uh, it does not have any kind of mm. uh, activity to it. Right. There's a so lot you of, make it interesting. Definitely. 
So um, your students, do they get, a, get an opportunity to actually go to the court at any point in time? Indeed. You have university lecturers coming in okay. and they are able to invite students to specific places where they can speak about the law in okay. their countries. You also have magistrates encouraging students to be able to come and observe mm. the court process. Right. Uh, individual attorneys who specialize in areas mm. such as alternative dispute resolution, mm. they, are, they are able to allow two and three students who like that area specifically mm -hmm. to visit their office and they can have dialogue with them. Okay. So the year for a uh, Cape Law students is quite an active year. Right. And, and while Lionel is talking about law, I mean, that, that situation can pertain to any other subject, uh, sub, any other subject you know. Yeah, precisely. You can visit embassies if you're into languages, mm -hmm. you can visit um, laboratories if you're into science. Mm -hmm. So that situation can mm -hmm. apply to other subjects as well where students can go out and do their field visits. Yeah. Lionel, as a teacher of geography and law, I mean, you would have seen a number of SBAs over your years. Precisely. <laughs> Is there one that like stands out to you that when you think of a really creative SBA, you'll say, wow, this is the one I remember from 15, 20 years ago. Yes. As a matter of fact, this SBA was around 2013. The student actually made the merit list fifth place in the entire Caribbean. Oh, the merit list is this list of the top 10 students That's in the right. region. Okay. That's right. The student <laughs> actually made the merit list. Right. And what I found was that the student was able to identify not only that alternative dispute resolution, mm -hmm. which was her topic, right. would be able to reduce the number of cases that would be under investigation the by the courts. Right. Mm -hmm and that you can solve problems before they actually reach the court mm. stage. She actually went into the process of looking at the setting of an alternative dispute resolution room okay. and compared it to the actual court setting to be more relaxed mm. so that you can come to a reasonable solution <laughs> to a problem, thereby easing the court system okay. and being able to find cases that were actually referred to Mm -hmm. that would have been court cases that would have been lengthy right. had it not been for Probably the presence not. of alternative dispute resolution. Wow. That one SBA stood out. I still have a copy of it today. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I would have to consult her if I wanted to right. talk I, I, about I it I hope Donna and her measurement <laughs> officers have a copy of that yeah, yeah, exemplars yeah, yeah, as well. Awesome. And what about geography? Because I see geography as like one of the most exciting subjects out there. Yes. I cannot imagine a geography class being boring? Not at all. Every topic in geography requires you to be able to have the practical component. Mm -hmm. I cannot think, as I said earlier, of <laughs> one um, topic in the geography syllabus mm -hmm. that will not force you to be thinking about, let me see what this weather station looks like. Mm -hmm. All right? So, um, like any other subject, you will have the variation taking place. Mm -hmm. But for the purposes of studying geography and for the components of the syllabus, mm -hmm. um, you have students being able to leave the classroom thinking about the fact that this is real life. Mm. So, for example, we are in the hurricane season now. Yeah. I mean, are there any of your students who get exciting, excited when they hear that uh, a tropical system is forming in the Atlantic of the coast And of they track it on computer. Really? Okay. And they're able to uh, give you the degrees north and the degrees awesome. um, south of um, the, the system. Mm -hmm. And they're able to tell you um, what the meteorologist was referring to. Okay. They're familiar with the language associated with the subject. So it's real life application. Yes, because you must have a very strong vocab in relation to every one of these subjects. Okay. okay. All right. So you need to know your cold front, your warm front, right. your intertropical convergence zone, and be able to speak the language of the subject. And that is all part of the entertainment. And that is all part of the interest of the subject. Okay. You've been around CXC long enough, so you must have seen some really good science labs as well. Anything yes. that stands out to you, Donna? Well, I, I, before I was inside of CXC, yeah. I was um, a, a chief as well. Okay. And so we used to have some, and I don't, don't want to call it, say, say the specific country, but we used to have some, some um, lab books where the students would go on these tours. Right. 
And these students weren't just going on tours within their countries. Right. These students were, were traveling. These students were getting on planes mm. and going on tours to find out what is happening in other Caribbean regions. Mm. And that was pre that was very very impressive for us. Yeah, okay. to actually see that they, you know they were so excited about these SBAs and not just you know my territory, but right. I'm going to get on a plane. Exposure. And, yeah, and the parents. I mean, we have to commend the parents of those students right. because they had to provide the, the support. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that was, that was exciting. You're listening to a very exciting and watching a very exciting issue of uh, Region Talk here on UWE TV. We are t talking about school-based assessment. We're taking a break and we'll be back in a few. The John Connors Fife, the rhythm of the drum, the strum of the pan, the lilt of the voice from island to mainland, all pigments and tones, old and young, his and hers, all we are one. You, we, me. This is UE TV. Hi, my name is Michaela Gonzalez, and I'm the president for the UE Mona campus, and you are watching UE TV. Welcome back to Region Talk here on UV TV. We are discussing school-based assessment or SBAs. Lionel, earlier we spoke about group SBAs, um, Donna explained it, but CXC is moving towards implementing group SBAs. How have you found this in your institution so far? I have found that the idea behind group work is what you're going to find in the workplace, first of all. Mm -hmm. You're going to find that doctors will be operating as a team. Right the lawyers will be operating as a legal team. Yeah. And therefore, when students operate as a team working on an SBA project, mm -hmm. you are preparing them, as I said earlier, for the world of work, mm -hmm. along with the fact that you are going to be able to see how they can work together as a group mm -hmm. with a subdivision of the Label. SBA mm -hmm. and who is going to be the manager of the group, right. who is going to be responsible for the time frame that you're going to bring in your section mm. on, who's going to design the questionnaire, who's going to be responsible for putting the information together, the layout, following the word limit. These are the kind of things that are going to be happening with the introduction uh, of group work, which has already begun. Right, group dynamics. Group dynamics, yeah. Yeah. indeed. Okay, and Donna, what's the thinking behind group so, SBAs? Um, what we heard, we listened to the teachers okay. and we heard them and we said, they're saying, okay, we have all these assignments to correct, mm -hmm. we, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And we looked for initiatives right. to, to sort of try to help um, reduce that work. Like, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. And so one of, one of those initiatives, as Lino said, was group work, which mm -hmm. is working very well. Okay. We're also looking at another initiative mm -hmm. where we're looking at cognate SBAs. So okay. we, we want to say, well... What do we mean by cognate SBAs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain. So what, we, what, what we're looking at is if you do physics, chemistry, and biology, so that's, that's a, a cognate group. Okay. That's a science cognate right. group. Or if, if you want to look at a business cognate right. group, oh. principles of accounts, principles of business. Yeah, yeah. So if you're looking, yeah. So right. if you're looking at a, a group, mm -hmm. a, a person who does all three of those subjects, right. we, we, what we're saying is um, we, we assess certain scientific skills. skills. Yeah. We assess analysis and interpretation, as I said before, mm. planning, designing, drawing, and we assess certain skills. And these skills are, are, are similar across the, those, mm. um, that cognate group. And we are saying, if a student is doing chemistry, biology, and physics, um, can they just submit one set of, of lab books? We're still not fully there yet because we're getting some pushback, mm. but that's, that's where we want to try to go. Because it is the reduce, skill yeah, and not the knowledge right, per se. Right, we're mm. measuring the skill. Mm -hmm. we're, that's what we're trying to get out there. We're mm. measuring the skill and not your knowledge of physics right. or your knowledge of biology. Because it will be tested on the other okay. papers. Right. Okay. And so we're hoping that we can go there and that should mm. help um, reduce mm. some of the, 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 the workload. World. And also we have gone there, we have reduced the word limit in some of the projects. I think we've reached a point we were saying, um, we can accept a thousand words for um, CSEC, CSEC and 1500 right. for K. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are listening, you know, we, we're hearing mm -hmm. the teachers, we're hearing the students, and we are coming up with initiatives and we are 
we are willing to talk with everybody mm. um, and listen, put, you know, meet us, put forward your initiatives, put forward your ideas, and we are willing to um, implement. As a teacher who carries two subjects, <laughs> this must be news, news to you. This is really good. This is really good. It reminds me of the fact that if you are in the science area, for example, there's an overlap. Of, of, of academic material content, uh, yeah. content. Mm -hmm. um, so what's happening here is that while preparing for one course you obviously would be reinforcing some area in mm -hmm. another course mm -hmm. all right and uh, most students tend to do Caribbean studies for example in the second year of their sixth form program and you would find that depending on the kind of SBAs that they would have done in the lower six they're able to modify the SBA, think about a way that they can further develop the topic so that it can then be used for mm. their Caribbean Studies SBA. Okay. So indeed, your lower six experience mm. can facilitate an easier upper six experience. Okay. And the group work would then be uh, even more sustainable right. in upper six because Caribbean Studies lends to that okay. based on the content mm. of the course itself. Right. One of the other things, Donna, is the carrying forward of SBA scores. You could explain that to us? Yeah. Um, sometimes a student might not have done well in their paper one or paper two. They, they mm. might have done very well in their SBAs. Mm. They carry in 29 over 30 percent. Mm. But um, they didn't do very well in their paper one or the paper two for some mm. reason. And they didn't like get paper one, you mean? The paper one is your multiple choice multiple exam. Choice. Paper two is your structured ex um, right. as your essay exam. Mm. And for some reason, they didn't do well and they decide, well, you know, I'm going to repeat mm -hmm. the subject. If you repeat the subject, there's no need for you to repeat the SBAs. You can okay. carry forward that mark from the previous year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once you register as a, carry, as a repeat student, student. Uh, you have to make sure you register as a repeat student, right. you can carry forward those, those marks. Okay. So for the CSEC, you can carry forward up to one year, mm -hmm. and for the CAPE, you can carry forward up to two years. Okay. Yeah. Have you found this beneficial? Mm -hmm. to definitely, students? definitely. Yeah. There are some universities that are very demanding right. and require that you have a cutoff limit depending on the kind of grade you're going to have. Right. And of course, the demand for the program that the student is planning to enter. Right. So therefore, a student might decide that it is feasible to go forward and uh, rewrite this paper again because I In do order not to get a better have, grade definitely, to qualify. yes, because mm -hmm. I do not have to worry about doing the SBA again. Mm -hmm. CSC has afforded me the ability to have a grace period to be able to Can't use the material again. Right. And therefore, that is a positive, definitely. Okay. So this all helps you as a teacher and the students to manage the whole SBA to process. To manage the whole SBA process. Okay. One of the vexing issues about SBAs, and we get it all of the time at CXE, is the issue of plagiarism. And how do we manage that? How do you control that? You're right where the rubber meets the road as a teacher. How do you deal with that as a teacher initially? And then we'll talk to Donna about what CXE okay. does. Well, I am aware that there is a computer program, and we tell the students this, okay. <laughs> um, that we can see um, your, the percentage of your work, if it is written, that is not yours. And if you're going to be using material which is not of your own mm -hmm. um, development, then you should be referring to the specific place you would have gotten the material right. from, and it must be well documented in your bibliography. Mm -hmm. Credit must be given to the person um, mm -hmm. that is responsible for the material. Right. Since you are in a field of research, you must be able to refer to somebody else's work. Right. But you must not in any way in that SBA mm -hmm. lay claims to that material as being yours. yours. And therefore, um, I must be fair here in that there are some cases mm -hmm. where students innocently mm -hmm. fall into the trap of not checking carefully that material mm -hmm is to be well researched before they can use it mm -hmm. as their own. Okay. And therefore the job of the teacher then is even more managerial in that we have to look to make sure that mm -hmm. students do not fall into the innocent misrepresentation okay. of material that might not be theirs. Mm -hmm. All right? So therefore we are managing to make sure that we are looking over to see that there's no plagiarism right. because we want to be able to facilitate sending professional persons out there right. at a mm -hmm. very young age. So we have seen cases where we've sorted that out, mm -hmm. students are aware, and they, for the most part, as far as I'm 
aware they try never to fall into that right. category so of this, this, was for, this would form part of the feedback that Donna referred to in terms Absolutely. of saying, um, look, you need to go and put this in your own words or attribute this to the source or something. Definitely. Okay. What CXC does okay. in order to at, manage plagiarism? At CXC, what we do is we have, um, we have moderation and process. We have, okay. we have one type of moderation system mm -hmm. where we request that the school send us five, a sample of five books um, mm -hmm. from that school. Okay. Right? Um, we look um, at students in the top, students at the bottom, and students in the middle okay. in, that, in that sample. Mm -hmm. And what we do, what we look for in that sample is we look for the authenticity of the students. We want to make sure that it's the students' work. Right. And we want to make sure that the teachers are awarding the marks, you mm -hmm. know, as they should. Um, over the years, um, initially when we started out, things were really, really good. But over the years, we start to mm. see some what is plagiarism um, creeping, creeping in. in. And not necessarily plagiarism of the type that you that, that, um, like don't mention, but we start to see what sort of like copying, you know, okay. students copying other people's work, other right. kids' okay. work. Mm -hmm. And it, that is, even though as a student, you might not think it's easy for CXC to, to, detect, to see that, yes. to detect, to detect, uh, to detect that, sorry. I'll give you a story. Uh, one year, um, mm -hmm. as a chief, you know, we got these books, these sample of books, and, you mm -hmm. know, t table leaders look at these books. I, as chief, look at these books. And everything is in these books word for word. In the and same we, books? Uh, yeah, all five of those books, word for word. And we said, you know, this is suspicious. Okay. But we have this system in place at CXC that um, if we see something suspicious, we can ask the school, can we have all of these books? Right. So not just the five, right. but we want the, the whole class, the right. 30 books of the whole class. And when, we got the, when I got the books as mm -hmm. a chief examiner, right. everything was word for word. In all, all 30 third. books? Wow. Yeah. But let's not um, move away from our, from our system. So our system mm -hmm. uh, where we, we request well, those that, five that, books. That tells us that, that at least you have... I mean, people should have a sense of comfort that CXC has mechanisms in place right. to check. So we, have yeah. the, so we have that system where those five books come to us. But even though we only check those five books, which is mm -hmm. what some people think, mm -hmm. we have a system in place where we can request right. the other books. Of course. Right? Another, so another system that we've put in place recently, mm -hmm. and you heard people talking about it a lot, is on-site moderation. Okay. You, I'm sure yes. you've been hearing a lot about yeah. on-site moderation. And I'll use PE as an example because right. that's one of physical the subjects. Physical education yeah. and sport. Yeah, physical <laughs> education. Um, you know, throughout the years, the yes. students, um, throughout the, the two years that they're doing the course, they have to um, develop certain PE skills, skills. Um, coaching skills. Right. And so we, on the day, mm -hmm. on, on, a, on a particular day, you have a moderator going mm -hmm. uh, PE expert. Right. And the students are expected to demonstrate sure. those skills. Okay. Uh, on that particular day. Right. So even though there's the teacher is marking those students continuously right. on that particular, your football skills, your cricket skills, right. there's actually an expert who will come to see if you really have those skills. Right. So we do have um, some systems in place mm. to, to ensure that what the skills that the student, that you mm. say that they have, the mm. skills that you say the students have, that they actually do have. Mm. And so those are the um, quality right. assurance mechanisms so that we sure. have, in, yes. have in place. And um, as Lionel say, the teachers do their check and their checks right. and as well. So we work together as an examining body and as teachers to make sure that um, mm. we we will never get rid of it a hundred percent, but right. um, we, it's minimal. And yeah. the, the penalty for this is severe from CXC. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. very, 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 very se severe. You yeah. might, I mean, um, you. It's like debarment or something. Yeah, you might not get your. Um, you might go into your paper one and paper two, but we might not give you your scores because mm. we want to be sure right. that you have done the SBAs. Because if you haven't done the SBAs, mm. especially in a, something like science or, or law, we can Precisely. send you out there saying right. that you, we certify you mm -hmm. to have done um, school based assessment. So. Um, so how, how seriously is this addressed to students when they start the SBA process line? In the process of introducing the SBA mm -hmm. for any new course at the A-level stage or at the CSEC stage, we outline, and they all do have a copy, mm -hmm. of what is required. Okay. We explain the gravity, the level of serious 
is associated with um, any problems that could stop them from being able to move on. Right. And they would run the risk mm -hmm. of seriously interfering with their career and their future development if this is done. And therefore, we are able to talk to them at a level that they understand the importance of this not being involved in any form of plagiarism and um, you know not copying anybody else's work mm. right to keep it as a minute to a minimum as, as Donna would have said just briefly Donna there's a difference between cheating and plagiarism because yeah. um, sometimes we speak to students and they ask questions um, so I go on the internet and I find this thing and I put it there I mean the idea about plagiarism is you can use the work, you just yeah. have to say you it have is... You acknowledge the, right. the, the, the... Yes. Yeah. And teachers, I, as a mm -hmm. teacher, I did that. Mm -hmm. You try to tell them, yes, you know, you can, mm -hmm. but it's not your work. So in the bibliography, you must acknowledge that this came from this particular person. Right. And, there's, and I'm sure teachers teach them exactly how to write the that citations. bibliography. Yes. That's right. right. There so is a format, so yes. there's a format, APA format, right. MLA format, and they know which one is required per course. Okay. And that no student, having not been an author, um, <laughs> <laughs> reserves the right to, to, to place a watermark on notes and just right. decide that, you yeah. know, they're going to put them out there okay. or, or uh, SBA for that matter. Okay. All right, yeah. we are going to wait our turn and go up the ladder slowly but surely. <laughs> okay. You are looking at Region Talk and we are discussing school-based assessment. We'll take a break and be right back. Caribbean rhythms. Caribbean currents. Caribbean matters. This is UE TV. My name is Howard Brown, and I'm the president of the UE Open Campus Guild of Students, and you're watching UE TV. Welcome back to Region Talk, our final segment, and we are discussing school-based assessment. Lionel, when students hear about school-based assessment, or those three letters, SBA, what is the attitude? I have seen cases where some students show a facial resistance to it. <laughs> facial. <laughs> they show facial resistance to it, mm. and... Um, you can tell that uh, at the beginning, mm -hmm. there is some apprehension. At times, they might wonder if this is necessary, mm -hmm. and this is where the teacher comes in. Right. The explanation behind mm -hmm. why you do it. And many students do, by the time you explain the concept of working for part of your mm -hmm. uh, score, right. um, outside of the examination, mm -hmm that tends to sit well okay. with students at the CSET level and at the mm -hmm. CAPE level. So that's a good selling point. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. What happens here is that mm -hmm. the student is able to recognize that, look, you are doing a course, and this course allows you to be able to earn mm -hmm. some of your grade without the pressure, as we had said earlier. Right. Yeah. Um, mm. you know, without the pressure of an examination setting mm -hmm. and you're able to comfortably perform at your best by being able to show me what you have available mm. from the research side of the course. Okay. Whether it be labs, whether it be uh, actual research presentations mm. as some courses require them to. Right. It varies per subject, but by the time you explain the importance of mm. the SBA as earning part of your score, and being ready for the world of work and being able to move on progressively, the students tend to come around within the first meeting of, okay. of, of that discussion. And mm -hmm. I'm sure when you give them their percentages that they can actually walk in, and for a CCSL right. student, you can actually walk into 50%. Precisely. Wow. CPA is 40%. Okay. Um, CAPE is 20%, 20. Right. and CSAT ranges from 20 to 30. 30%. So you, there's a, a good percentage of, of your marks nice. that you can actually walk into the exam room with. And, and you spoke about your students going on to university. That I mean, this must help them as well because these are skills that they need at university. Indeed, uh, university does require that there is a component, whether it be a unit test. Right. We keep on talking about the fact that 
um, well, there's going to be a portfolio to be handed in, whether that portfolio was in group form or individually. Mm -hmm. However, there is the concept of the unit test where in some subject areas you will know what the topics are going to be. We will test you and this mark can go towards your SBA mm -hmm. um, Okay, Manage, managing the SBA. Now, one of the things that I hear a lot about as well is, well, we don't really know if the SBA is the student's work because the parents do it anyway. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, willing, I'm willing to refute that. Um, By all means. I'm, willing, I'm willing to refute <laughs> that because in the area of law, as I said, mm -hmm. I've seen classes with 25 people. Right. And um, some students would have been to see individual attorneys mm -hmm. who will have their names and they will be able to question the attorney. Uh, for example, you have persons going to the commission of police right. or his representative. Mm -hmm. um, persons within the legal sphere have been interviewed by students live, mm -hmm. face to face. And I mean, who's going to stop a parent from saying, oh, you can say this this way or you can say that that way. Right. But in terms of the actual work, work. being done by mm -hmm. the student, I can vouch for the subject areas having a very high percentage of mm -hmm. student input. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so therefore, I wouldn't want to encourage the thought that um, the entire SBA was done by a parent per se. Right. I, I wouldn't want to go that way. Having been mm -hmm. there and seeing the students actually, actually involved the in, in the actual work. Right. That's yeah. reassuring. And, yeah, and, and I agree with Lionel. Yes. Um, you know, in my in my years as, as chief examiner before I joined as CNC as an assistant registrar, and had look, looking at SBAs, mm -hmm. majority of the time it's, it's the students' work. Okay. Yeah. But parents do have uh, a significant, well, <laughs> at some levels, significant involvement in SBA. How far should parents go in helping their students with well, charges? Okay, I like to think that the, the parents' role vary from level to, mm. at, at different levels. At the CPA level, we expect that the parents are going to have a heavy involvement. This is, primary is, school. this is the primary school, yeah. and this is the first time the students are he hearing this word SBA. What is mm. SBA? And so I expect that the teacher, uh, sorry, the teacher and the parent, the mm. parent is going to seek out that teacher and they're going to work closely, especially when the student has to do something called a self-assessment yeah. in third form. Well, I mean, sorry, not in, in yeah, primary school. Yeah. Well, what is a self-assessment? Mm. And so I expect a very, 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 very integral role. Parents have got to be there from beginning to end. Right. And I expect that at the primary Holding level. Holding their hands. Yes, holding hold yeah. their hands, guiding. Mm. When it comes to the CCSLC, the CSET and the CAPE, right. I parents' sh role should be motivational, mm. inspirational, mm. and just provide support. Mm. And that support I have seen in the uh, process of providing transportation. I've seen refreshments yes. being brought to right. the site. Thank you. That's mm. what we want to see. You with I, me? Yes, that, yes, that's, that's mm. the role that I want the parents. Okay. Drop, this, drop the, the, student, the student off to the lawyer's office. That's right. right. right? Mm -hmm. But at that level, like I said, motivational, mm. inspirational. Mm -hmm. but not participatory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So how do you communicate this to your students and their parents? Because they might say, oh, I don't have to call you Mr. Uh, C -Z C -Z. or <laughs> Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we, how am I supposed to do this? Where am I supposed oh, yeah. to get this from? We have a system in the schools here in Barbados where you have form level meetings. Right. And at these form level meetings, we are supposed to brief mm -hmm. the parents as to what is expected from each student. Mm -hmm and that if the work is not done by the student, it will show up at some point later. Right. And the last thing you want is to have a beautiful portfolio, and then you cannot defend that portfolio right. in the form of an, a written examination. Mm. All right? We have mm. seen parents being able to contribute in the process of equipment. Mm -hmm. If you have a broken piece of equipment, there is a parent, uh, for example, who was known to purchase something for the weather station at the school they once taught at. Okay. All right. So the... So you actually had your own weather station at the school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was part of the geography class? This was part of the geography um, class. Impressive. Yes, definitely. So what happens here is that... Um, parents Sorry, so did you actually produce any meteorologists? Meteorologists? I believe that some persons went on to do the course in geology and okay. some persons went on to do meteorology as a profession. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, but you, it's very difficult to keep track of students if you move around as a teacher one. Of course. And as time goes on, you never know. <laughs> yeah, right? sorry. A, a very significant point that Lionel made is 
if you don't do the SBAs yourself, you'll still find out. Because mm -hmm. when you look at the essay papers, if you look at the essay okay. papers, you will see that there are some um, questions which are um, SBA type questions, okay. you, which you will not be able to answer. So there's a correlation. You, yes, you will not be able to answer some questions, especially in the science, the, in the science paper two. Yeah. The first question mm -hmm. is an analytical question. Right. So if you haven't done SBAs, you can't get that question done. So we will still know mm. if um, you've been exposed to SBAs or not. So it helps um, the student to do the SBAs themselves because they're still going to have to show, mm -hmm. demonstrate those skills when they do the written paper. Okay. So parents, you hear, you can help, but um, not do. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as Donna said, the, the role should diminish as the child gets older. Okay. Okay. Well, it has been a pleasure. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to wrap up a few words on SBA. What is your message to students, parents, and fellow teachers in terms of SBAs and the management of them right now? Oh, dear. Uh, yes. Um, um, I, would, I would say that the SBA is something that we should all embrace mm -hmm. as a professional group. The teachers, uh, we will have to find ways and means of being able to manage mm -hmm. the SBAs to the best of our ability. Um, with what CXC has provided in their guidelines so that we can be able to meet CXC halfway. Mm -hmm. And um, then we will be a very successful group of persons handling it at that level. In terms of the parents, they must be able to create the kind of environment, depending on the type of SBAs that the student has to complete. And um, of course, the students will then be able to manage their time to the best of their ability, mm -hmm. bearing um, um, the considerations of chores at home or whatever right. the case may be, uh, so that they can do it as part of the entire school curriculum mm -hmm. and program. And by the wider society being able to accept students in the field, mm -hmm. whether those students are working on um, a holistic program in relation to how the SBA is going to be incorporated mm -hmm. into the society that when you see a group of students wearing the jean pants and the white shirt <laughs> or oh, they're working on their SBA so right. let's make room for them <laughs> this <laughs> is facilitate and be yeah. accommodating to them so it is a societal thing it is a practical thing and I believe that we can all make a final submission that it is important mm -hmm. it belongs to the direction in which the world is going today okay. Done. Yes, I, I want to reiterate the whole um, thing about feedback. I want teachers to make sure that the students have constructive, constructive feedback. And as I said before, that will guide them in the right direction. And so at the end of the day, a student should be able to walk into the exam with the maximum amount of marks that they can carry in. And I want to endorse Lionel saying that we are a team. Um, CSC, the teachers, we are a team. And CSC, we are open to listening, mm -hmm. hearing your concerns, and finding ways, working with the teachers, working with the ministries, and finding ways to help reduce our workload, reduce the teachers' workload, mm -hmm. our workload at CSC. So we want to work as a group, as a team, as you see, we are working here today. <laughs> <laughs> very much so, very much so. Team Donna and Lionel, thank you so much. <laughs> Donna Giles, Assistant Registrar of Measurement and Evaluation at the Caribbean Examinations Council. Lionel Seeley, teacher of Cape Law and CSET Geography at the St. Michael's School in Barbados. I am Cleveland Sam and you have been watching our Region Talk on UE TV. We thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this program. Remember, you can watch this and all our programs on our website, www.uetv.org, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Also, join the conversation on social media by visiting our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages.